Hello and welcome to another Brawl Games video. Today we're taking a look at Vanifar Evolved Enigma. And you may have seen my standard build of Vanifar, where I played it alongside a bunch of artifact creatures and plus one counter synergies. And we often ended up using Vanifar's second ability to add plus one counters to the team. In this deck, we're mainly going to be cloaking cards from our hand as a face down 2 2 creature with Ward 2. So the idea being that we can cheat some ungodly expensive permanents onto the battlefield using the cloak mechanic and then using some cheap flicker effects, we can turn those cards face up again and basically get a huge mana discount and get some of these Eldrazi and 10 plus mana cards onto the battlefield as early as turn 4. So if you break down our deck, it's actually very simple. There's only four categories. You've got the flicker effects, you've got some mana acceleration, ideally one and two mana, mana accelerants, so we can play Vanifar on turn three and then ideally flicker on turn four. And then we've got a little bit of uh, protection, ways to maybe save Vanifar from instant speed removal and some counter spells to protect our game plan. And then finally, the largest category are the payoff cards. These are the cards we're hoping to cloak onto the battlefield and then flicker, but we could also eventually ramp into them using our other ramp cards. So now for the deep dive, starting with the flicker effects, which are of course kind of limited in number since there's not a ton of them on arena. A lot of flicker effects are in white and we're limited to blue flicker effects here. So if we had more on arena, I would easily play a handful more, but uh, these are all the ones we've got. So at one mana, a very good one is Essence Flux, can flicker for one mana. Then at two mana, there's a Planar Incision, also leaving us with a plus one counter. Siren's Ruse doesn't have any pirates to go with it. Then there's the Fairy's Time Twist. We've got Blur at 3 mana, also drawing us a card. Release to the Wind is a little different. We can exile a card and then cast it for free. So that can also maybe save a creature from a sweeper effect. Then Displacer Kitten can maybe flicker multiple things, but does require a non-creature spell to enable it. Then there's a Stratagem, which can flicker two of our creatures potentially and draw a card. Then a Thassa can flicker a creature end of turn and can maybe turn into an indestructible god as well. Hide in plain sight, not a flicker effect, but another way to cloak cards onto the battlefield in case Venifar doesn't work out. And then the Golden Argosy, a little clunky to enable, admittedly, but uh, we still want to play as many of these effects as we can get our hands on. And then Isidore, also kind of expensive as a 5-mana creature, but at least it will pump up our face-down creatures. And then we've got our ramp cards. At 1 mana, there's Halfling, can also make Vanifar uncounterable, Elvish Mystic, Lenor Elves, and Utopia Sprawl. Then we've got Explorer, Into the North, and Grow Spiral to put extra lands in play. Wolf Willow Haven and Chancel Land making extra mana. And then our two mana artifacts include Arcane Signet, Cold Steel Heart, Guardian Idol, Mind Stone, and the Iron Crag. And then at three mana, Cultivate a nice two for one. And Uro can also be escaped out of the graveyard, so it can provide some value. And then in our kind of blue interaction category, there's Brainstorm. Can also maybe dig towards some of our payoff cards or other combo pieces we need. And we've got a fair amount of shuffle effects to shuffle those cards we put back on top back into our library so we don't need to draw them again. Then we've got Slip Out the Back, Time Your Safekeeping, as well as Tyvar Stand as one mana instance potentially to protect our commander. Witness Protection, a removal spell for the opponent's commander, assuming it's a creature. We've got uh, Cyclonic Rift and Rivers Rebuke as mass bounce spells. And then a few counter spells, including Wash Away as a one mana counter for opposing commanders. We've got Memory Lapse, Negates, and of course the classic counter spell. And uh, once the next expansion is on Arena, you can easily add Mana Drain to that list, assuming it doesn't get banned in Brawl. And then our payoff cards include Primeval Titan. At 6 mana, it's still realistic to hard cast, and then it makes it a lot easier to cast our other spells. Then Ugin also has a bit of synergy with face down cards as we get to make those face down spirits. And then uh, we can also use it as removal. We've got Hullbreaker Horror bouncing stuff. Kyurabas the Sea God making an 8 8 Kraken with Hexproof and eventually tapping stuff and stealing stuff as well. We've got Thorn Mammoth as more removal whenever we play a creature. We've got Hornet Queen also fun to flicker as it will make 4 1 1 flying insect tokens with Death Touch. We've got the Nyx Bloom Ancient to give us a ton of mana to just hard cast whatever we have in hand. We've got Titan of Industry, not one of the more powerful payoff cards, but also a good one to flicker and re-enable its Enter the Battlefield ability. We've got Nissa as a Planeswalker that can also make tokens and eventually overrun our team to win the game. Koma is another decent payoff that can protect itself with those Serpent tokens. Ancient Silver Dragon's awesome if it can ever connect with the opponents and draws a ton of cards. One with a multiverse is kind of a mini version of Omniscience that can also play spells off the top of the deck. 
got a Voring Clex, which will double our mana while punishing the opponent for tapping their lands. Galta can cheat all our creatures from our hand onto the battlefield. Cityscape Leveler can destroy stuff. Got the Great Henge to maybe draw us additional cards. Also works if we cloak cards with Vanifar, it will still trigger and draw. And then a Portal to Phyrexia can help reanimate some of our curve toppers while wiping the opponent's board. Jingataxius can draw us a fresh hand while reducing the opponent's hand size to zero, so they'll have to discard every turn. And then we've got Omniscience to cast all our spells for free. And then we've got our two Eldrazi with Ulamog and Amarkul. Now we don't get to cast Trigger if we flicker them using Vanifar's Cloak ability, but we can maybe still uh, cast them using Omniscience or one with a Multiverse. So we get to exile two permanents with Ulamog, or maybe take the opponent's turn with Amarkul. But of course they're still very powerful if we can cheat them into play otherwise. And then our mana base has lots of dual lands, ideally ones that come into play untapped. Cavern of Souls can make our commander uncounter. The fetch lands are great with Brainstorm, and these can also get either Breeding Pool or Hedge Maze, which lets us surveil, so that can also give us some nice card selection, so I've been pretty happy with uh, one Hedge Maze and the surveil lands in general in Brawl. And then we've got our snow-covered basics, because we're playing with Into the North, so want at least a few snow-covered basics. And then Castle Garenbrick can also maybe come in handy at ramping out some of our creatures. The channel lands offer a bit more utility as well. So yeah, that's our deck. Now let's jump in some games and see what the deck does. Okay, we're on the play, and we've got a promising hand facing the Shrine deck. So a portal to Phyrexia may not have a ton of creatures in play to take out, but at the very least their commander and some shrine tokens. So yeah, witness protection is not going to be at its best. Hopefully we'll find some other expensive creatures to cheat into play. But we've got ramp, flicker effects and payoff. So can't really complain. I'll fetch a forest, I guess, now that we drew Hedge Maze. Although, I guess getting a second blue source could have allowed Witness Protection plus Essence Flux on turn 4. Opponent with a Utopia Sprawl. Okay, so I'm just gonna play Venifar and put in Portal. And sort of hope they just tap out for the Goshintai. We picked up another flicker effect, so any additional payoff would still be a good draw. It's gonna be a Citizen Champion, and no additional land. Okay, picked up Ancient Silver Dragon, so don't mind if I do. Hedge Maze can keep a counter spell on top, sure. And then go to Attackers, put in the Dragon, and then sure we'll attack. Maybe just with Vanifar. And then I could do this now to deal with Champion, get the Dragon in play. Could also maybe wait. And uh, if the opponent plays another creature, we can take it out with a portal. Alright, perfect. So that triggers. They will get to draw a few cards, but I don't mind. And then... Uh, Stratagem will clean things up nicely. And our dragon gets to immediately connect, which is also pretty huge. Draw counter spell so we can protect our dragon. And yeah, opponent has already seen enough, it seems. Can cloak in maybe a witness protection or land or elves. Get to roll the dice and draw 17 cards. Yeah, that's uh, pretty effective. Play a land and probably just pass a turn here with counter spell up. And then next turn we can potentially cheat an Eldrazi into play. We've got options, can also cast Gross Parrel. I guess I could have cast a Primeval Titan too and go Shields down on Counterspell. 
it's kind of a shame we couldn't discard to hand size and then reanimate one creature with portal to Phyrexia next turn. Day of Judgments, we're gonna say no. And then end of turn, Grow Spiral. And I'm sure our opponents will throw in the towel now. Sweet, on to the next one. Facing the Mythweaver. And what do we think of our hand? We're missing a Flicker effect for Galta. We've got two Mana Elves and a Cold Steel Heart. So we're starting to ramp quite nicely, but still nowhere close to casting Galta. Yeah, I think we look for a Flicker effect and maybe a better Curve Topper than Galta. Well, this counts. We have Omniscience and one with a Multiverse. Got a cheap flicker effect and a bit of ramp, so we just need to hit one or two more land drops. And then we should be good to go. Opponent with a turn one Utopia Sprawl. I'm jealous. And what do we get? Just a uh, forest here. Next turn we can cultivate if we don't draw land. And then we could immediately Cloak and Essence Flux. Now I'll just go for Venifar while the coast is clear. Put in Omniscience. And then next turn we'll be off to the races. Our opponent does get to do Mythweaver things. Double Scrapyard. Okay, let's uh, do it now. Cast a free one with the multiverse, see what's on top before we cultivate and shuffle. Free Iron Crag. Although, let's see, Omniscience only counts from hand, so this would be my one free spell for the turn, so we can probably do better. Uh, let's see, so this is the free Omniscience. Cultivate as opposed to the free one with a multiverse. Okay, Elvish Mystic on top. Yeah, I mean, I guess uh, I just want to get it out of the way. And then a River's Rebuke's not bad. So I can cast River's Rebuke. Since we haven't uh, cast our free spell yet with one with a multiverse. Play a line off the top and then Galta. Well, that was quite the turn. Can still cloak a card and attack. Now we know we're drawing pathways, so it's not the most exciting turn here coming up. Take our turn. And Siren's Ruse on top. So let's see. I guess I could attack with everyone and then flicker whatever creature they block with a Mythweaver and take it from there. Pay two mana. And then we can hide in plain sight as well. Opponent with Harrow in response, making some more land drops. So that's also starting to get out of hand. Damage happens. Opponent's at three. Cast this for four mana. And all right, so our opponent concedes. I guess they're just too far behind here. Awesome, on to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw, facing Strime. So, an equipment and a vehicle deck. We've got a reasonable hand. With Maze, we're looking for an extra land. 
Then we've got Ramp, can play Venifar, and then we've got a few Curve Toppers to try and cheat into play. They're not necessarily game ending, but at least we've got our Flicker effect. So I'll try it. Line tax on the play, not quite as good as on the draw. And uh, do I keep Island? I think I do. So maybe a reason to Cold Steel Heart instead of Into the North next turn. So our opponent's going to be playing lots of cheap equipment. Sort of body and mind with protection from blue and green. Pretty good in this matchup as it turns out. So Ugin could be an answer to Stram, even once equipped. So maybe that's the plan here. Vanifar put Ugin in play. And then next turn we can try to flicker it to deal with Sram. And then our colorless creatures could technically also block protection from blue and green. So that does help, but don't want to chum block their 4-4 four four here. And I suppose they also get a replacement wolf, so they can just equip that next turn. But we'll get to make another blocker in the meantime. Okay, so I can Growth Spiral and then still release to the wind. Uru was also a nice one to mill. And then I don't think I want to attack first, but can always uh, release at instant speed, so may as well. And then I'll cloak into the north. Opponent takes it, so we got two more damage in. Play Ugin, destroy Sram. And then with Shadow Spear they can maybe trample the wolf to finish off Ugin. But hopefully this bought us a bit of time. And our opponent won't be drawing quite as many cards with Sram now. Next turn we can escape Uro, play a Great Henge. Not super worried about getting milled out when we have 100 cards starting out. Or 99. Alright, opponent does replay Sram, so they won't be equipping Sword this turn. And I'm fine to trade. They'll have to discard to hand size, often the case with the land tanks. And a Cyclonic Rift could be great. Might be worth waiting a turn on it. So I can go for Uro and then Henge. Play Henge. And then I can uh, use Vanifar to put the incision in play. Since we're kind of done cheating cards onto the battlefield. And we get to draw. Vanifar can attack. And then we're in decent shape now with multiple card draw engines. Can even keep up Cyclonic Rift. So we'll wait and see what they do if they Equip Sram with a sword, maybe we rift it in response. Or we can just chum block and then next turn overload. Courser, that's fine. So they're planning to cast some cheap equipment, draw some cards. I think we can allow that. So everything is discounted by one. Mindstone's essentially free. And the boots, okay. Arcane Signets replaces itself. 
and they're going to equip the boots. All right, they don't have a great attack. Next turn, Overload Cyclonic Rift. And that should pretty much ramp it up. I guess our opponent would fall to one if we add plus one counters with Vanifar. Should have gained two life end of turn. That's all right. And then, yeah, Vanifar can trigger here. Go for plus one counters, or I can cloak to draw with Great Henge. Maybe that's still better. Because if we double check the math, 5 plus 9 is 14. Get two counters, would still be one short. And find an Ancient Silver Dragon. That one's also pretty fun. What does Uro draw? A land. It's going to be pretty hard for the opponent to recover from this. They will need a board wipe. And even then we still have a Henge and an Ugin on the battlefield. So the attack with the sword actually ended up helping us in a way, with Uro getting milled. Sram's back on the battlefields, but they only have four mana left. Mindstone into Signets. And uh, yeah, I can't imagine them surviving here. Colossus Hammer is a fun one. Maybe if they were able to cheat it onto one of their creatures and then also give it lifelink. But that's asking a bit too much. And our opponent explodes. Awesome. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw, facing Pantlaza dinosaurs. So negates not necessarily at its best. We've got a few too many protection effects. Thassa's great, but we don't have any ramp to play it on turn 3 and no curve topper to cheat into play, so this hand has a few issues. This hand is just light on mana, no ramp, only two lanes, but it does have flicker effects aplenty and some nice cards to cheat into play. So this one's pretty risky. If we don't string together some land drops, but I'll try it. And a hatch maze was nice. Nyx Blue Mansion's probably overkill. Vorinclax is pretty similar. Opponent off to a good start. Mystic plus Arcane Signet here. And an Into the North, so, I mean, can't complain. Found the green mana to cast Into the North, and then... Now we get to maybe play Vanifar on turn 3 already. Could also play Thassa first if we're afraid of our opponent keeping up removal, but... Opponent taps out for Pantlaza, hitting Hulking Raptors, so also very nice hits, allowing them to ramp even more. So yeah, I think we play Vanifar. And then which creature would be best to have him play? Probably Vorinclex. And then with one mana we can Essence Flux. Could also maybe uh, cloak the Silver Dragon and then use Stratagem to flicker both. Opponent now with Watley. And a Migration. So a bunch of extra mana. Next turn they can maybe transform Watley. But no dinosaur for now is nice. So I'll take nine since I think Vanifar is still going to be useful to flicker the Ancient Silver Dragon next turn. Even though with a transformed Vorinclex it's not too difficult to hardcast. Okay, so let's talk strategy here. Or stratagem. So put Ancient Silver into play with Vanifar. Could also Essence Flux Vorinclax first, just to give us access to more mana, which may be worth it here. Uh, 
Okay, so I could cast Ancient Silver Dragon, although we can also cast Thassa. Maybe should have named God with Cavern of Souls earlier, because we're somewhat limited in blue mana. I guess it still makes double blue. So, um, yeah, I guess we go to Attackers. Cloak the Dragon. Vanifar can attack. And then I could just pay the mana to turn this face up as well. Keeping up Stratagem can maybe protect Vorinclex from removal. So I don't think I need to do anything else here. Can also flicker the opponent's creatures if necessary. Although Stratagem only flickers my own. Ooh, Rejuvenation. So seek X creatures. Uh, where X is the highest mana value among creatures they control. So we could maybe... Let's see, I guess this returns immediately, so it doesn't really help if we target Pantlaza. So yeah, that happens. And we could just die here if our opponent hits some hasty dinos. The Eternal Wanderer is pretty good too. Can sort of wipe the board here. And Pantlaza triggers. So yeah, with Vanifar it's often nice if your creature returns right away after flickering it. But uh, possible that a flicker effect that keeps a creature exiled until end of turn would have lined up a little bit better. So opponent giving their team lifelink. They all have haste thanks to Nahiri's resolve. So we seem pretty dead. Yeah, opponent hitting the resolve was lucky. But even without it, they still have an Eternal Wanderer, which could at the very least minus four and leave us with just a Vanifar. But I'm gonna flicker Vorinclex. I could use Stratagem here, maybe we'll draw into something miraculous. Just a land. And then the Regisaur also gives their team haste. So are we dead here? Pretty sure if they go all out we're dead, but opponent holding back now. Okay, so maybe we still get a turn. So this has me taking 11. Yeah, if they went all out we were dead. But I guess we have some mana untapped technically. And then, uh, do we need to planar incision anything? Don't think so. I'll just take my turn. Resolve goes off. So we're hoping to hit big on the Ancient Silver Dragon, draw a bunch of extra cards, and then with the extra mana from Vorinclex we can put it to use. Yeah, I'm not even sure how we're supposed to be able to cast Planar Incision with Vorinclex, since Cavern doesn't normally make blue, but I'll just take my turn. Okay, so Vorinclax can deal with Wanderer, Ancient, Ghost Face, and hope for the best. Don't want to pay one life if I can help it. So the fetch line's not quite as useful, even though it could shuffle after a brainstorm. Fifteen, okay. Not a bad hit. And what do we find? Portal to Phyrexia. We've got one with a multiverse. Can cast a portal for free. And then let's see. We can also blow up the Nahiri's resolve. Although Register Alpha will still come back, giving Dinos haste. So we just want to put as much stuff in play as possible, pretty much. I could also cast a Holebreaker Horror to then bounce the Resolve back to hand, which might slow them down. So yeah, let's say we start with one with a Multiverse, since it casts another spell for free. 
Emrakul. Okay, well, I guess we found our solution. Take the opponent's next turn. And that should take care of things. And then, uh, what else do we have? Can cast Uro to gain some life back, and the opponent scoops it up. Can take their turn, and then just send their dinos into our creatures. And then uh, take it from there. I'm sure we can figure out lethal next turn. Awesome, that was a very unexpected win. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play, facing Sorin Grim Nemesis, so black-white control. Well, we've got some exciting cards to potentially cheat into play. Problem is, Isidore as a creature is not going to be very reliable at uh, flickering them. Brainstorm is only great if we had a fetch land to go with it, so this one's a little too sketchy. Don't have any ramp either. Okay, this one is missing a payoff card, but those are usually easier to find. So I'll try it. And then lots of flicker effects. Can fetch up a surveil lane to maybe find a payoff as well. So we'll uh, start there. And thanks to Cultivate we can both play Vanifar and Essence Flux in the same turn. Yeah, I've been pretty happy with uh, surveil lanes in Brawl as a one of two fetch. Now that we can play quite a few fetch lanes, and I'll keep into the north. Get an island. So still looking for a payoff, but into the north seemed like a nice turn to play. Ooh, nice brainstorm. So now I can brainstorm and then fetch afterwards. To get rid of whatever we don't need. Well, did not quite draw what I was hoping for. So we'll get rid of the artifacts, and then fetch and cast Cultivate. Okay. So we can play Vanifar potentially protecting it with Essence Flux if they take it out. Ooh, there we go, Omniscience. Although we're kind of light on spells to cheat into play with it, but I'll take it. So put in Omniscience. And then I could immediately flicker it here. And then cast Displacer Kitten. While the coast is clear. Possible they have enchantment removal for omniscience. Blur only flickers creatures. But uh, we can flicker omniscience using Displacer Kitten's ability, perhaps. So for now we can pass. Opponent had the cut down. So I guess now I can blur. Save the kitten. And nothing we need to flicker here. Draw a card, find Cavern. Still have Cyclonic Rift available. So that can also maybe save Omniscience. Yep. Okay, so we'll bounce the Relic. Pun can make mana with it in response and then replay it essentially. Seems worth it to save Omniscience. And then we can hopefully hard cast whatever we top deck. Alright, so get lost as well. So double removal for omniscience. And draw Isidore. So we can play Isidore, which will combine with Venifar, and then we can cloak a cavern maybe and go exploring. But maybe I'll start by exploring onto Venifar. See what's on top. Castle. Can explore again. And an Asaza fine draw. Can hard cast Nissa or use the cloak trick. Might be overextending into a board wipe slightly. Yep. 
Well, at least Nissa has a planeswalker that's harder to interact with. We have three forests, so the minus seven's not backbreaking, but still effective. And they've already had to use some answers to planeswalkers. Does Sorin damage planeswalkers? It does. But we have more loyalty. Probably should have played Vanifar. Might want to keep it in case I have another board wipe. And then Forest can also pump the team, so that's still worth playing. Chaos Wrath, so glad we didn't overextend. And then now keep on plussing. Play Vanifar. Do we want to cloak is the question? Or do we keep up incision to maybe save Vanifar from removal? Doesn't help against sweepers. So I think we're fine to cloak. Give us an extra creature to maybe overrun next turn. Professor Onyx, and our opponent explodes. Next turn, minus Nissa and attack for the win. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play, facing Voya, Jaws of the Conclave, a very scary commander. Our hand has Displacer Kitten as a flicker effect, with Time Your Safekeeping to maybe enable it, and then Hullbreaker Horror to start bouncing stuff. We don't have any mana acceleration, so it's going to be turn 4 Vanifar or Displacer Kitten, at which point we're probably already facing Voya. So this might be a little too slow and light on ways to enable Displacer Kitten. This hand would almost be good if we could actually cast a Lenor Elves on turn 1. As is, I can still Cold Steel Hearts and then play Vanifar on 3. We've got the Kitten, but no non-creature spell other than Cold Steel Heart to enable it. So, close call. Maybe it's worth a shot just because of Emrakul trying to close out the game in a few attacks. And then on the play, maybe we're still fast enough. So now Iron Crag could enable Displacer Kitten. And I don't expect too much removal from the opponents to take out a Vanifar at instant speed. But if they keep up mana, we can always reconsider our options. Okay. Play Vanifar, Sheedan, Emrakul. And then with a 1 mana, instant or sorcery, we could uh, already transform it next turn. If not, we'll have to wait a little longer. Opponent naming Elf. And a Rex Sage can destroy Cold Steel Heart. Not the end of the world, can still play the Kitten. And then next turn we could enable it twice. Could have also opted for a plus one counter, so Emrakul could have attacked for three. So can they deal with a Displacer Kitten? Just a Cemetery Prowler. Exiling an artifact, giving those a discount. Okay, so play a Guardian Idol. Flicker Emrakul. And then... I don't know if we need to do anything else for now. And alright, our opponent has seen enough. Getting plus one counters on colorless creatures also synergizes with our Eldrazi, so we could grow Emrakul to set up lethal over the course of two turns. But uh, yeah, opponent has seen enough. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play, facing Kroxa, so a discard deck. And if they have some cheap targeted discard, they can kind of pick our combo apart. But we have a good start with lots of ramp. Uro might also get escaped if they make us discard a bunch. Missing a payoff, but we'll hopefully draw into one between Spiral and Uro. We'll see quite a few new cards. SS Flux may be also nice to play alongside Uro. Just to flicker it and re-trigger. Although, since we didn't escape it, we uh, wouldn't get to keep it on the battlefield. 
opponent with Innocent Blood answering our Lenor Elves. So I'll need to fetch a blue source to Spiral. Island is probably fine to preserve our life total, even though Breeding Pool has upside if we need to have more forests for Nyssa, for instance. Could have also main phase cast Spiral in case we drew into another green one drop. Now Divest can take Artifact or Creature, so that's going to take Uro. That's fine. At least we're getting closer to escaping it. And yeah, had we cast Spiral in response, they could have maybe taken the Ancient Dragon. Alright, now we just need Vanifar to resolve, put in Ancient Dragon, and then Flux can flicker it. So we're getting close. Soul Shatter deals with Mystic. That's okay. Just need to top deck an untap land. Seems to be pretty hard. And there's Croxa making us discard. So what don't we like? The Argosy is going to be a little clunkier to set up our flicker effect as opposed to SS Flux. Maybe we don't need Hide in Plain Sight because we already have Vanifar on 4. And um, we'll also be able to escape Uro soon enough. Sure. And an official makes me discard again, so goodbye Argosy now. Alright, so could escape Uro already. I think we take the opportunity to cheat in the Silver Dragon. Hope they're out of discard effects. They're not too far from escaping Croxa, although it'll still need double red. And Languish will wipe the board. That's painful. So playing Ura would have worked out a lot better. Probably should have kept Vanifar in the graveyard since we're gonna escape it with Uro. So it would have ended up in uh, the command zone anyway, and maybe more cards in graveyard for future escapes. But it's kind of a reflex to just uh, put it in the command zone. Okay, let's see if Uro can beat Croxa. An age old battle. Eldest Reborn. Pretty good answer here. So removal for days. We'll have to discard next turn. At this point, we're probably done with the flicker plan and we're just gonna hard cast our threats. So Essence Flux can go. Cruelty can make me discard. Takes Ugin as the only castable spell, but we still have Uro. So probably no need to brainstorm, can brainstorm in response to a discard effect to kind of hide a card if we want to. And then our graveyard's clear so they can't reanimate with uh, Elder Dragon War. Sure, I'll play our forest and pass. So our opponent gets to tutor and they can get back Either a Crocs or a Court Official, I guess. So we'll brainstorm a response. Alright. Well, Amarcool's not getting cast anytime soon. Also don't want to discard it, because then our opponent can uh, potentially reanimate it. This can only get back creatures, so I could still discard Nyssa. And then Foothills to shuffle away Amarcool. Or I could play Nyssa which can come down and then could also take out the cruelty so which orders the question here maybe Nissa first and then I'll just get rid of the fetch land and then if they do make me discard Emrakul I have Nissa to blow up cruelty so they can't reanimate it Opponent draws. And they're gonna escape Croxa. So 
So goodbye, Amrakul. And then, yeah, I guess I start by attacking with Uro, just to trigger it. Hope they trade to an extent, because we would like to protect Nyssa, since we're going to have to mine us on Cruelty. Could also flash in a hole breaker. Right, for the trades. So yeah, now Nissa blow up cruelty looks good. Doesn't die to hive attacking it either. Although they could exile Uro while it's exposed. Opponent can bring back Roxa once again. So goodbye, Hullbreaker. And a Siren's Ruse the draw. So this can plus. Play Venifar. And Cloak the Ruse. Alright, Pun gets to tutor whenever they want. Probably another board wipe. Or maybe a different reanimator effect to steal Emrakul. They did send Crocs out to the command zone as opposed to the graveyard this time. And the One Ring, also a good pick. So they're protected this turn. And with the fetch lands, we can get back Uro. So that's a good starting point. Can maybe surveil as well. Don't need cold steel hearts. And then I'll maybe hang on to the stratagem, even though they may make me discard it. Since a board wipe might be imminent, and then there's no point in attacking here. And uh, yeah, if they don't have a board wipe, we can overrun Nissa to maybe win next turn. Invoke Despair answers both my Planeswalker as well as a creature, but that's manageable. Two mana left to make that three. They're still currently dead on board. And a Liliana doesn't change that. Sag Vanifar. Okay, looks like we finally got there. Attack face. And our opponent explodes, so we had to put up with a lot of interaction here, but we eventually got it done. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw, facing a Tazri and a Zerda activated ability deck. Our hand is missing a payoff card. We've got a ramp, flicker, and even some protection. Not sure how good Cyclonic Rift will be. But yeah, without a payoff, our hand doesn't really do anything. Alright, this time we've got the payoff cards, but not the flicker effect. Do we keep... Also missing some mana acceleration, so we're going to be kind of slow to get going. I'll go to 6. Alright, this is probably the most balanced hand so far. Still no mana acceleration, but at least we have Flicker and Payoff. And then Thorn Mammoth should be good. Maybe get rid of Nyssa. And then keep one with a Multiverse as the card we try to cheat him to play. And then Thorn Mammoth can hopefully deal with their creatures. And then we can even fetch our Surveil Land to maybe look for some... Turn to mana acceleration. Nothing from our opponent so far. And I'll get rid of the land here, hope for some ramp instead. Alright, Argosy can also help Flicker if needed. And if we suspect our opponent's keeping up a counter spell, we could play the Argosy instead. 
It's going to be Omen of the Sea to draw. Can potentially see Tassari here. Chromatic Lantern instead to fix for all five colors and a halfling. Well, we don't have any play to make here, sadly. So just gotta pass it back. So our hand may end up being a little too slow. Opponent with a growth spiral next. And a briefcase, so they're setting up their mana. I guess uh, there's no harm in trying Vanifar. And then next turn we've got a few flicker effects to choose from. Could also put in the Mammoth and then Stratagem flickering both. Alright, Vanifar down. They actually could have used Void Rends on our face down card since it is uncounterable so they don't need to pay the ward. Opponent goes for Tansari instead. Alright, so in that case I guess we release to the wind. Although, Stratagem draws a card, which may be more relevant. And then, let's see. Can cast Nyx Bloom Ancient for free. Or we can start with Thorn Mammoth and take out Tazri, just to be safe. And then next turn we'll uh, play the Nyx Bloom to enable the rest of our hand. But uh, yeah, looks like our opponent scoops it up with Thorn Mammoth taking out Tansri. Alright, so we get to see our Venifar Brawl deck in action. And yeah, the deck can be incredibly powerful when everything lines up. Now it is not the most consistent deck, since we do need different elements, both a payoff card, a flicker effect, and ideally a bit of ramp, since Venifar is kind of slow to get out there. So if we don't draw all three of those elements, the deck might be a little clunky, and uh, it doesn't take a ton of interaction from the opponent to break up those synergies. But again, if it does line up and we don't face too much interaction, the deck can be incredibly powerful. So that's going to do it for today's gameplay. want to thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day!